Chapter 2 I am on my hands and knees in the doorway to Mr. Collins' office, and gentle hands are around me, helping to pull me up. I am so embarrassed, damn my clumsiness. I have to steal myself to glance up. Holy cow, he's young! Mm -hmm. I'm just here to change your hands around me, help me pull. Who help her? Okay. I am on my hands and knees in doorway to Mr. Kong, and gentle hands are around me to help me pull up. I am so embarrassed. Oh, so Mr. Colin helped. But in the movie, he didn't help. I watched the trailer. He just sit in the chair, chair and say, Oh, I see her. She fall. I'm not going to help her. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Miss Hale, he extended a long finger hand to me once I'm stirred. A matter of calling. But you're white. Where you like to sit? He's so young and attractive, very attractive. Tall, dressed in a fine gray suit, white shirt, and black tie with unruly bronze hair and intense bright green eyes that regard me shrewdly. Okay, he isn't blonde. Oh, I'm happy. He isn't blonde. Okay. He had brown hair. Uh, actually, it takes a moment for me to find a voice, and I think my mouth has plopped open in astonishment. If this guy is over 30, then I'm a monkey uncle. <laughs> Why? Why were you comparing yourself to a monkey uncle? <laughs> I, I don't know what's a monkey uncle. I don't know what it is that. People might know. I don't know. I extend my hand to him in a daze, and we shake. As our finger touch, I feel a strange current go through me. The tingling of electricity. I withdraw my hand hastily, and I can feel myself blinking rapidly, matching my heart rate. Miss, Miss Hale is uh, disposed, so she sent me. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Call. Indisposed, I meant indisposed. And you are? His voice is warm, possibly amused, but it's difficult to tell from his impassive expression. His look, and uh, he looks middly interested, but above all, polite. Isabella Swan, I'm studying English with Wos uh, Rosalie, uh, Miss Hill at uh, Washington State. I see, he says simply, and I think I can see the ghost of a smile in her expression. But I'm not sure. Would you like to sit? He raised towards me. A white leather button, L-shaped sh couch. The room is vast with enormous modern dark wood desks beside the floor, two ceiling windows. Everything is white except on the wall by the door. There's a succession of small square painting, 36 of them arranged in a square. They are exquisite, an exquisite, a series of mundane, forgotten objects painted in such precise detail. They look like photographs displayed together. They are breathtaking. A local artist, Troughton, he said, when he catches my gaze. They're lovely, raising the ordinary to extraordinary. I remember. She add the, he actually say, raising the ordinary to externally. Uh -huh. Funny. I murmured, distracted by him and by the painting. He gazed at me intensely. Yes, Miss Swan, he replied softly. Apart from the painting, the rest of the room is pleasant enough, but it's quite cold, clean, clinical. I wonder if it truly reflects the personality of the Greek god who sinks gracefully to one of the white leather chair to upset me. Oh, so she actually say Mr. Colling is a Greek god, huh? Okay. I'm disturbed by where my thoughts are heading, so I'm buzzing myself with fighting the question that Rose had given me and then setting up the mini-disc recorder. I am all fingers and thumbs. 
dropping in trays on the dark wood coffee table in front of me. Mr. Collins says nothing, as I became increasingly embarrassed and flustered. You mean nervous? Okay, yes, she's nervous. When I finally pluck up the courage to look at him, he's watching me, one hand relaxed in his lap and the other cupping his chin and trailing his long index finger across his lip. I think he's trying to suppress a smile. I think he's thinking. He's not smiling, you gotta be thinking. Sorry, I started. I'm not used to this. Take all the time you need, Mrs. Spawn, he said. Do you mind if I record your answer? After you've taken so much trouble to set up the recorder, you ask me now? Just say yes, dude. <laughs> I flush. He's teasing me, I hope. I blank at him, and I think he takes a pity on me because he relents. No, I don't mind. Did Rose, I mean, Miss Hill explain what the interview was for? Yes, your student newspaper. Uh, who is talking? Okay, let me read this. Did Rose, I mean, Miss Hill explain what the interview was for? Yes, your student newspaper, WSU eyewitness to appear in the graduation issue as I should be confirming the degrees of this year's graduation issue. Okay, who cares? I don't know who's speaking of. I don't care. I give up. I don't know who's Edward and who's Bella now. Okay. Mm. Oh, this is news to me. I I'm temporarily preoccupied on the thought that someone not much older than me may... than me. Okay, maybe six or so and... Okay, he's mega successful, but still, he's going to present me with my degree. I try and drag myself back to the task in mind. Good. Well, I have some questions. Mr. Collins? I smooth a lock of hair behind my ear. I'm sorry. I thought that voice was actually Edward, but no, that's Bella. I should make her. Good. Well, I have some questions. Mr. Collins? I smooth a stray lock of hair behind my ear. I thought you might, he said, dead pen. He's teasing me again. I feel the heat in my cheeks, and I pull myself up in an attempt to look taller and intimidating. I press the start button on the recorder and try for professional. I read the first of Rose's questions. You are very young to have amassed such an empire. To what do you owe? What do you owe your success? I glance up at him. It's not like the trailer. <laughs> Cause uh, when she say that part, I'm talking about Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie. So when she say, "What do you owe?" and then he just interrupt and say, "What do I owe to my success?" Then she just nodded her head as if Mister Grey understand her. Let me check. Yeah, this one is on. Okay, just checking my recording if it's on. If it's not on, I'll be sad. He smiles rough, woefully at me, but looks vaguely disappointed. Business is all about people, Miss Swan, and I'm very good at judging people. Wow, you're such a detective, sir. I know how they take, what makes them flourish, what weakens them, what inspires them. And how to incentivize them. I employ many, many good people and I reward them well. I believe that the road to success in any scheme is to make oneself master of that scheme and I work hard, very hard to that. I make decisions based on logic and facts and I have good solid ideas and an exceptional team that can come up with good solid ideas. Again, good people. Maybe you're just lucky. This is on Rose's list, but he's so arrogant. Yeah, this dude sound arrogant. He sound like he know everything. He said, sound like, I'm a, I live very long to see how people is. <laughs> they say it's a fan fiction for the vampire. Mr. Vampire. I don't subscribe to luck or chance, Miss Swan. The harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. It really is all that having the right people on your team. 
I think it was Harvey Firestone who said the growth and development of people is the highest calling of leadership. You sound like a control freak. Well, 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 woman, do not say that. <laughs> Bella, you do not say that in an interview, a professional interview. You're going to interview, don't say that, okay? The words are out of mouth before I can stop them. See what I mean? <laughs> oh, I exercise control in all things, Miss Swan. He say, not a trace of humor in his smile. I look back at him. He holds my gaze steadily, impassive by my heartbeat quickens, and explicitly, and my face flush again. Why does he have such an unnerving effect on me? He's of a world... <clears throat> Overwhelming good looks, maybe the way his eyes blaze at me. He continues, Besides, a man's power is acquired by asserting yourself, and your secret reveries, but you were born to control things. Do you feel that you have a man's power? Control freak. <laughs> she, she still call him a control freak in her head. I implore over 50,000 people, Miss Swan. 50,000. I'm doing the math in my head. That's too much. Your building gonna blast. Gonna burst, I meant. It's gonna burst with all those people. And it's a health hazard, too. That gives me a certain sense of responsibility. Power, if you will. If I decide I'm no longer interested in the telecommunications business and sell up. 25,000 people will struggle to make their mortgage, mortgage payments after a month or so. I think my mouth drop again. I am staggered by his lack of humility. Yeah, I get what she meant. Don't you have a board to answer to? I asked, disgusted. I own my company, so I don't have to answer to a board. Dude, this is an interview. You have to answer it or make up something. Because when you're in an interview, just make it up from your head. That's how it goes for an interview, as usual. Okay, where am I? He raises an eyebrow at me. Of course, I, I would know this if I had done such some research. But holy cow, he's so arrogant. I changed tack none and do you have any interests outside of your work oh god i feel you girl i feel you he isn't worth it he's such a arrogant little bastard and such an arrogant bastard let me go back to my fake british accent actually i gave the british accent since the beginning let me go back to that <clears throat> where am i I have a variety interest, Miss Swan. A ghost of smile touches his lip. Very variety. And for some reason, I feel confounded and hurt by his steady gaze. His eyes alight with some wicked thought. But if you work so hard, what do you do to chill out? Chill out, he smiled dazzling. White tooth, crooked smile on me. I stopped breathing. He really is beautiful. No one could be this good looking. Well, to chill out, as you put it, I sail, I fly, various physical pursuit. He shivered in his chair. I'm a very wealthy man, Miss Swan, and I have expensive and absorbing hobbies. I glanced quickly at Will's cresting, wanted to get off this subject. It's just hobby, honey. It's not that bad. You invest in manufacturing. Why specifically? I asked. Why does he have to be so uncomfortable? Yeah, this dude is making things comfortable. Actually, I feel nothing. <laughs> she's actually saying that she's feel uncomfortable. I like to build things. I like to know how things work. What makes things tick. How to construct and deconstruct 
and I have a love of ships. What can I say? Sound like a mad scientist. <laughs> oh, like a mad scientist, like, I'm gonna explain these people to understand how they are. That'll sound like your heart talking rather than logic and facts. His mouth quirks up at me and he stares at me appraisingly. Possibly, though there are people who, people I know, who say I don't have a heart. Why would they say that? Because they know me well. His lip curls in a wide smile. Now I mean that you have bad friends, honey. Good friends? Do not say that. <laughs> Unless it's him. He just say he wants to say that because he's sad. Depressed. Unhappy. Would your friend say that you are easy to get to know? And I regret the question as soon as I say it. It's not on Will's list. I'm a very private person, Miss Wong. Now go a long way to protect my privacy. I don't often give interviews, he trail off. Why did you agree to do this interview? Because I'm a benefactor of the university. And to all intents and purpose, I gonna get Miss Hill off my back. She bad good and bad good like PR people. And I admire that kind of tenacity. I know just how tenacious a wolf could be. That's why I sat here squirming me uncomfortably. Should I be revi revising? I'm also invested in farming technology. Why are you interested in this area? We can't. You. Oh. I don't even know what I'm reading. I'm just reading off from my iPad and. Oh, the screen is hurting my eyes. Ah. Uh. You also invest in farmer technology. Why are you interested in this area? I'm going back to that dialogue. You can't eat money, Miss Swan, and there are too many people on this planet who don't have enough to eat. Also animals. Also animals. And that's why they hunt. That sounds very philanthropic. Is that something you feel passionately about, feeding the world's poor? He shrugs. It's through business, he murmurs. Though I think he's being disingenuous. I don't know how to say. I don't know how to say. Hey, speak. Disingenuous. Oh, disingenuous. Okay, thank you, iPad. It doesn't make sense. Feeding the world is poor. I can see the financial benefits of this. Only the virtue of the ideal. I glance at the next question, confused by his attitude. Do you have a philosophy? If so, what is it? I don't have a philosophy as such. Maybe a guiding principle. Carnegie, a man who acquires the ability to take possession of his own mind may take possession of anything else to which he is justly entitled. I'm very singular, driven. I like control of myself and those around me. So you have one, so you want to possess them. You are a control freak. <laughs> That's what Bella said in her mind. She basically said, he's a control freak. I want to deserve to possess them, but yes, but the line. I do. You sound like the ultimate consumer. I am, he smiles, but the smile doesn't touch his eyes. Okay, he smiles, but his eyes in smile. <laughs> That's what she meant. Again, this is at odds with someone who wants to feed the world. So I can't help but think that we are talking about something else, but I'm absolutely mystify as to what it is i swallow hard the temperature in the room feels like it's rising or maybe it's just me i'm nearly through all the questions surely we always have enough material now i glance at the next question you were adopted how far do you think that shaped the way you are 
Oh, this is personal. I stare at him, hoping having offended him. He frowns at me, slightly. I have no way of knowing. My dress is peaked. How old were you when you were adopted? This is all a matter of public record, Miss Son. His son is saying. I flush. Yes, of course. If I known I was going to interview, I would have done some research. I move on. Uh, dude, you could just answer it. <laughs> you sound so rude. This dude is so rude. You had to sacrifice a family life. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. You've had to sacrifice a family life for your work. That's not a question, he tears. Of course that's not a question. That's why I had to reread a second time. <laughs> Sorry, I squirmed, and he made me feel like an errant child. Have you had to sacrifice a family life for your work? I try again. I have a family. I have a brother and a sister and two loved parents. I'm not interested in extending my family beyond that. Are you gay, Mr. Collin? I hear his sharp and take him. Oh, that's too personal, man. This, this is too personal. And I cringe and worry. Crap. Why didn't I employ some kind of filter before I read this straight out? You didn't read carefully when you were outside, honey? How can I tell him I'm just reading the question? Dang rose in her curiosity. No, Isabella, I'm not. And he raises his eyebrows, a cool gleam in his eyes. He does not look pleased. I apologize, it's um, weird in here. It's the first time he said my name, and my heart beat. He means it's your, his first time he actually called your full name, so he keep calling you Miss Swan. My heartbeat has accelerated, and I feel my cheeks heated up again. Nervously, I tuck my hair behind my ear as it worked its way loose. He cocked his head to one side. These aren't your questions. Uh, no, Rose, Miss Hale, she compiled the question. Are you co colleagues to the student paper? Oh, crap, I have nothing to do with the student paper. It's her extracurricular activity, not mine. I can feel my face heating red. No, she's my roommate. He rubs his chins in quiet deliberation. His green eyes are praising me. Did you volunteer to do this interview? He asked quietly. Oh my gosh. Yes, that's why she's here. That's why she's here. Didn't she say that? Didn't you know that? She literally say, I'm here for Rose. I was drafted. She's not well, I say weakly by way of explanation. That explains a great deal, he say softly. Why you say softly? Where you are? Oh, I, I, I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> oh my gosh! There's a knock at the door, and blonde number two enters. <laughs> Miss De Colin, forgive me for interrupting, but your next meeting is in two minutes. We're not finished here, Angela. Please cancel my next meeting. Angela has to serve him. She momentarily lost. He raised his elbow on her. She flushed. Very well, Mr. Collins, she mutters, then exit. He frowns, then turns his attention back to me. Where were we, Miss Swan? Oh, we're back to Miss Swan now. <laughs> That's what Bella says. It's not me. It's not me. Uh, please, don't let me keep you from anything. I agree. I agree. I agree with Bella. I already know about you, Miss Swan. I think that's only fair. I can't... I shouldn't judge a fanfiction since... There's other fanfiction... That sometimes the story doesn't flow right. But I love them. Because I love them. Because this plot is so good 
That's why I'll say the plot is good. Even though it's dark, it's not for kids. Very dark. Those are the fan fiction I read. Yeah, that's pretty much how I'll describe it. Where where am I before I'm blabbling about fan fiction? Yeah. Oh, here we are. I want to know about you, Miss Swan. I think that's only fair. His green eyes alight with curiosity. Oh crap, where is he going with this? His play, he plays his eyebrows under arms of the chair and steeples, ste steeples his fingers in front of his mouth. His mouth is very distracting. Oh, remind me of when I was in high school. I was playing with my mouth off trying. <laughs> Some guys told me not to do that. And I, was, and I continued just to annoy this dude. Not, uh, not seductive, but just to annoy him. But it was funny. Oh, yeah, I was such a kid. I was such a kid <laughs> that time. Uh, good time, good time. <sighs> I wish I was young again. My innocence. There's not much to know, I say, flushing again. What are your plans after you graduate? I shrug, flustered. Come to Seattle with both, find a place, find a job. I haven't really thought beyond my finals. I haven't made my any plans, Mr. Colin. I just need to get through my final exam. Which I should be starting for now, rather than sit on your palatial, shake, shranky, sterile office, feeling uncomfortable under your penetrating gaze. <laughs> oh, I love this girl already. I love her already. <laughs> Whew. That's so funny, actually. It's very funny. I should be studying now, rather than sitting underneath while being so uncomfortable on the... Here with you, sir. He won an excellent internship program here, he said Carly. I raised my eyebrows in spice. Is he offering me a job? Oh, uh, I'll bear that in mind, I murmured. Completely thrown. Don't murmur, just say it. Just just say it. Say, oh, I'll build that in mind. I say it completely thrown. But instead, just say, I murmur completely thrown. Though I'm not sure I'll fit in here. Crap. I am musing out aloud again. You speak out loud. I want to go back room. Hmm. Okay. I was gonna mumble something out, but I just had to all in. <laughs> Why do you say that? He cocks his head to one side. Entry, a hint of his crooked smile. Oh, I only think about uh, his what his face looked like. It looks, it gotta look scary. Like, a big smile, big eyes. And say, what do you say that, huh? Crooked his head to the side. Smiles. <laughs> uh, well, it's obvious, isn't it? I uncoordinate his coffee, and I'm not blonde. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so funny. I'm uncoordinate coffee, and I'm not blonde. <laughs> this is this is funny. <laughs> Blonde doesn't have to do anything, lady. Not to me. He murmurs. Oh, he murmurs again. And he gazes at me intentionally. All humor gone is strange muscle deep in my belly clenched suddenly. I tear my eyes away from this scrutiny and stare down my knotty fingers. What's going on? I have to go. I lean forward to retrieve the recorder. Would you like me to show you around? There, Bert. I hope <laughs> the, I hope you didn't catch that. Okay. I'm sure you're far too busy, busy, 
Mr. Colleen, and I do have a long drive. Yeah, she did have a long drive since she doesn't live in the city. You're driving back to Portland? He sounds surprised. And just suddenly, he glanced out of the window and it began to rain. Well, you better drive carefully. His tone, his, <laughs> his tone, <clears throat> his tone is stern, authoritative. Why should he care? Did you get everything you need? He adds. No, no, she didn't get everything. Cause during the interview, you feel like, like you want to change the subject. You rather stay far away, and then you just say, "Look it up on Google," because all the information is in there. Yes, sir. I reply and pack the recorder into my satchel. His eye narrows slightly, speculatively. Oh, okay. Um, iPad, iPad, speak to me. iPad. Speculatively. Speculatively. Thank you for letting me interview Mr. Colling. The pleasure's been all mine. No, the pleasure isn't. Sir, we barely know you. We barely have everything. And you just monologue your evil plan to rule the whole country. <laughs> Huh. Okay. Let, let me go back to reading. This is this is too funny. He sounds like he's going to be an, an evil villain <laughs> during his interview. His interview isn't an interview. As I rise, he stands and holds his hand out to me. Okay. Until we meet again, Miss Swan. Oh, it was a handshake. Ah, oh, I thought he was just like. Come to me, my lady. Come for me. <laughs> that was just a handshake. Because I know what a handshake is. You just pull out his hand. and Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's how it sounds like. And it sounds like a challenge or a threat. I shake his hand briefly. Feeling again the odd currents between us. I conclude it must just be my nerves. <laughs> you better go to the doctor. <laughs> Mr. Colling, I nodded at him. He moves gracefully to the door and opens it wide. I'm just ensuring you make it through the door, Miss Swan. Obviously, he's referring to his less than elegant entry to his office earlier. I flush. Well, that's considerate. I snap at him and he smiles. Why will you snap? This is how... Uh, Snapping is like, well, that's very considerate. <laughs> that's how snapping is. I'm glad you find me amusing. I lower inwardly. I walk to the floor and he follows. Angela and Jessica both look up in, in surprise. Do you have a coat? He asks. Yes. Jessica leaps up and retrieves my pea coat, which Colin takes from her before she can hand it to me. He holds it up and feeling beyond self-conscious i put my arms into it and he puts his hands very briefly in my shoulder as he pulls it over me i guess at the content if he notices he gives nothing away he presses the lift door and we stand there for a beat awkwardly in my part self-possessed and c cool on his the door is open and i hurry in desperate to escape I really need to get out of here. I turn to look at him and he's leaning against the door beside the lift. Well, I don't know where uh, the author is from. It basically, it's an elevator. <laughs> I was like, a lift. So it's an elevator. Okay. Uh, some state in uh, the United States, some state they have their own words. Like a uh, water fountain is called a bubbler in, in some other state. He really is very, very good looking. It's distracting. His br burning green eyes gaze at me. Isabella, he says as a farewell. Edward, I reply whisper. The door is closed. 
Be reminding us, but they share grace.